I usually talk about old computer games, but would you believe those weren't the only kind of games I grew up playing? As someone who didn't have any consoles for a good portion of my childhood, I fulfilled my gaming needs through toys, making rocks fight each other in my front yard, pretending to be a superhero in my backyard, and sometimes in public, and through obscure computer games. Also board games. That's the point I was trying to get to. Two of the board games I used to own were The Game of Life and Monopoly. I wasn't very good at either of them, but I'm not good at video games either, and does it look like that's stopping me? So when Spongebob versions of these games came out, I just had to get them. The Spongebob Game of Life and Spongebob Monopoly were mostly just the original games with Spongebob characters and locations painted over them, much unlike the Cars version of Monopoly that had the big racetrack you'd run around the board. Still, I was enthralled with the idea of my favorite TV show being plastered all over an existing game. Why do you think I liked Obstacle Odyssey so much? I actually still have some stray pieces from my old Spongebob Game of Life, like this Squidward. Oh. If you use this piece, you won't get ahead in the game. But what's fascinating is that Nickelodeon actually made online computer games for the Nick Arcade based on these Spongebob board games. Have you ever wanted to play a board game without a board, the need to get away from a computer screen, or the risk of human interaction? Well, the Nick Arcade's got you covered. These were created by Sarbakin Game Studio, a Canadian studio that made all sorts of games for big franchises. One of their most famous ones was called Where's My Water, which had a Phineas and Ferb spin-off called Where's My Perry. They also made a ton of SpongeBob Flash games. They're still around, but many of their games stopped being available one day for no real reason. Seems to be a trend with these small companies. So let's check out SpongeBob's Game of Life. To start, you can make profiles for different games, then you can choose different characters for up to four players. You can play as Spongebob, Patrick, Sandy, or Squidward, then you can either choose to play the traditional game of life or one with additional mini-games. The mini-games can get annoying over time, so I understand playing without them, but we are here for the full Spongebob experience. So it's just like the typical board game, except with Spongebob characters and features. You spin a wheel and move throughout the map to get things like a job, a house, and even a pet. Unlike in the boring, usual game of life, everything is Spongebob-themed. It's exactly the same as the board game rendition, with all the same cards and everything. I remember the white top of the big spinner thing would always fly off. It was pretty fun and dangerous at the same time. As you get more features for your character, your little image to the left of the screen changes to account for them. It's really cool to see and a nice way to keep track of everything. Oh my god. It can't be. Is that... Fried ice cream. It feels like it's been 40 centuries since I last made that joke. Morty appears more in the games than he does in the actual show. Some of the spaces you can land on include a raffle spin that might give you something good for a price. Several tiles will also activate mini-games that can increase the amount of money you make. One of them is called Lockdown. You have to choose three numbers and Plankton will try to randomly guess them. This one's kind of annoying because it's the most frequent minigame in the whole thing, so you end up getting thrown into it constantly. Sometimes you're the one who has to guess the numbers, and then it's just unfair. It's completely random. Sometimes you get choices for certain careers or pets, so you play this weird minigame where you have to cut out the option you want with scissors. You can just select it in the traditional version. It's actually kind of hard, and they only give you just barely enough time to do it. Certain jobs will make changes to the mini-games. For example, being a police officer will give you more patties in Flying Patties. This one's a little weird, because there were several instances where I really should have caught some of the falling burgers, but they went right through my spatula. They also call Robot SpongeBob SpongeBot. Clever, but inaccurate. D for effort. If two players land on the same space, they're forced into a pillow fight where you mash one button to win. It's easy to make your opponent a pushover if you're playing against a computer and you set their mode to easy. Another minigame is this mailbox one, but the rules were a little unclear. I kept thinking I needed to click on Plankton, but I actually needed to click on the bills. If an opponent lands on this minigame, you have to decide which mailbox Plankton comes out of in the hopes they won't be able to collect their bills in time. There's another one where you collect coins as they fly out of a mechanical seahorse. It may be hard at first because of all the small objects that fly out of the seahorse along with the coins, but I got the hang of it eventually. Shocking, I know. On the subject of minigames, it took me a long time to realize that I could pop these bubbles while someone else was taking their turn. You get a bonus for popping a certain number over time, so it's a good way to keep yourself occupied while someone else is moving. I think this should be in the actual game of life. Designate a player to blow bubbles while the others try to pop them. See how well that goes for you. Only one downside. Everyone gets money for it.
I know, I hate teamwork too. Now there's also this one minigame that took me a while to figure out. The instructions are super vague and don't really do a good job of explaining how it works. You have to try and lower your debt by hitting the A button when the button on the screen goes up. Or if another player lands on this space, you hit the A button to raise their debt. Look, I'm raising Sandy's hospital bills with the push of a button. You want a game that ruins friendships? How about one where you literally plunge your friends deeper into debt? That'll leave you lonely for life. In this one, you wash windows to find people. It's nice enough. There's another one where you find a shell under a bucket, and one where you have to land these balls in tubes, and it's confusing to explain. I won it without really trying. Also, Perch Perkins is here. The end of the map is Shady Shoals Retirement Home, inferring that you retire once you make it here. You just run free raffles while the others try to reach you. Once everyone's there, the person with the most money wins. Whoa, nothing like seeing all your favorite cartoon characters all old and shriveling. I think this is actually an intelligent metaphor. No matter how much money you make, the inevitability of age will always catch up with you. This is the true end to the game of life, one that nobody wins. Or it's just a silly end screen, you be the judge. So basically, it's fair for what it is. It's a visualization of a board game and it delivers on what it promises. The animations are fun to watch and the minigames add life to it. Again, they can get annoying when you're relentlessly pummeled with them, but you have the option to play without them, so I can't really complain. This is a fine adaptation, if I do say so myself. Now let's check out the Monopoly edition. This one has a lot more to see and far more features that can switch up the way you monopolize. Before we get into it, I have a funny story. When I was a kid in summer camp, I was playing Monopoly with a few others. For some reason, they all decided to team up on me for no real reason. I got so angry I flipped the board over and ruined the game. Monopoly is a serious deal, don't take it lightly. You think this is a game? This stuff ain't for kids. So back to the Spongebob version. You have the same four characters as you do in life, but if you enter a secret code, you can unlock King David Bowie from Atlantis Square Pantis. There was actually a lot of discussion over how to unlock this character, but recently it was uncovered that you could just enter a simple code without too many extra steps. To give a little gist, Monopoly is a seemingly endless game where you try to buy the entire city and make all your friends go bankrupt. In this version, you have four choices for different game modes. You can play the traditional game and forego the minigames. You can play the SpongeBob minigame version. There's the Squidward version where everyone can control every piece on the board. And there's the Plankton version where you have to get rich before Plankton passes go. He moves across the board on every turn. When you first begin, the screen can be a little overwhelming. There's so much to look at and it's hard to determine what everything does unless you're a seasoned Monopoly player. When you land on a space, you either have the option to buy a location, draw a card, make a payment, get money, or even be sent to jail. The map is also 3D-ish, and you can roll the dice by vigorously shaking this clam across the screen. It's really fun. If you land on a space someone already bought, you have to pay them. But if you aren't playing with the traditional rules, it ain't over for you just yet. You can play one of several minigames to lower what you owe. In some cases, you can raise just how much you make, too. In this Mr. Krabs mission, you have to slam a button to lower your debt. You'll likely destroy your keyboard, but it's all worth it to win SpongeBob Monopoly. There's another one with clams that's basically the same deal. When buying property, you also have the option to auction for it against everyone else. Again, same old button mashing. There's also this mission where you do our favorite thing in the world. Pop bubbles! Sorry, I'm getting a little teary-eyed remembering the masterpiece of a game that was Spongebob Bubble Rush. If you land on Go to Jail, you have the option to hide from a cop and evade it, but it's one of the hardest challenges in the whole thing. Look, I totally clicked on him. Then you can also get out of jail by, you guessed it, button mashing to open the gate. That's how you get out without spending money, at least. There are also some creative ones, like the one where you move a mop to clean a spill in this really cool 3D Krusty Krab. This could make a good pop-up playset. There's also this one where you try to drown your friend. Fun for the whole family. When you pass go, you have a limited amount of time to shake Mr. Krabs' bag of money so he spills the $200 he owes you. It's really easy and not really necessary, though. Just give me the money. You also have options to trade property with other players, put a mortgage on your property, sell your property, build on your property, and all the usual Monopoly stuff that makes the game needlessly complicated and hard for newcomers to get into. 
Still, the game is fun enough, but like with life, if you aren't willing to deal with the constant minigames forcing you to smash your keyboard at every turn, you're better off sticking to the traditional mode. I'd also like to shed some light on the Squidward mode. This mode really goes to show just how idiotic the NPCs are. With the ability to control every piece, the bots get strategic and try to make everyone land on each other's property so they have to pay whoever owns it. The problem is, they don't consider whose property they force people to land on, so nobody can fall into debt because they keep getting paid by players that are forced to land on their spaces. Don't these bots know how Monopoly works? So you might get a little sick of playing with NPCs. Nothing beats having actual people to compete against when you're playing a board game. I imagine it's a little awkward, though. Four people crammed around one computer screen, switching off every turn for however long their Monopoly game goes on for. I can't imagine too many people would be up for that. You ask your friends, hey guys, want to play a board game? And they're like, sure, what games do you have? And you say, Spongebob Monopoly on the computer. Come to think of it, it's no wonder I never had any friends. Overall, both these games have their merits. They're amusing, and they provide good animations and music to go along with your board gaming experience. SpongeBob fans can also enjoy the amount of references they make. They're a nice way to pass the time. Not world-changing, but not bad either. Very good adaptations of games that were adaptations of other games. Now if you'll excuse me, I have to go hunt down three other people who are willing to sit at a computer with me for several hours on end. Thank you for joining me, I will see you in the next memory.